Um, nice to meet you. Good morning again. And uh, hi, everybody. Uh, today we is the, the form of the first okay talk on the quantum finance. Hope the last uh, introductory uh, course, okay, and uh, let you know some basic idea first. Okay, so today we'll, uh, I'll give you a simple uh, uh, introduction on uh, quantum finance. Okay, and uh, so uh, maybe before we start, uh, we talk a bit about uh, uh, some basic things first. Okay, so uh, as I mentioned, uh, quantum finance is the discussion okay, of uh, the market, financial market, uh, using the uh, quantum mechanics and quantum field theory. Okay, so uh, before we start, okay, so let's take a look on the, what is the, the role okay, we are living in. Okay, so we start with the uh, big picture first. Okay, and uh, as I mentioned in the last lecture, uh, the whole course is uh, synchronized with our book on the confidence. So uh, you can, if you want, you can also buy the book and take a look. Okay, but don't worry, if you don't have the book, okay, you still can uh, use my PowerPoint lecture to learn all the basics from e-commerce and uh, confidence. Okay, so don't worry about that. Okay, so let's start off with uh, the big picture. Okay, it's what I call a uh, tale of two worlds. Okay, as you know, and uh, the world we are living in, okay, is what we call the physical world, okay, the, and the world governed by the, the laws of physics, what we call, okay. So, what's in detail, okay, what is the thing that we are uh, looking at? So, this section, we will first talk about uh, three different worlds. The physical world, what we call the Newtonian world, uh, the world of... Uh, uh, mass material and also the uh, cosmic world okay the world of uh, what we call general relativity and also uh, at the other end is the very micro and uh, what we call the subatomic world of the world of quantum mechanics okay so this lecture will give you some very brief idea so don't worry okay i will only give you brief idea without any uh, compact mathematics so what is the world we are living in? The second, any physical laws governing our world. Okay, that is important. Uh, funny thing I can tell you that uh, although the whole world of physics is very complicated, that the basic law that govern the world, in fact, are very, very simple. Just uh, simple equations. So uh, we'll talk about that. And also we will Think about everything happens. It is uh, by chance. By chance means uh, by accident. What we call okay by chance with luck. This sort of thing, or the determinant, which means already determinants. So later when we talk about one very uh, interesting theory, what we call uh, the chaos theory, we will know one thing. The thing that we think is uh, by chance or random. In fact, it's not random. They are what we call deterministic. Okay. So in the chapter of uh, chaos theory, we will talk about that. Very interesting. Again, the mathematics is not too difficult. Uh, I will just uh, tell you some simple equation and mathematics that related to chaos theory. Okay. So uh, don't be worried about that. So the law of physical world. Okay. We are talking about free world. As you see my uh, first chapters. The f first is the first scientist okay, that reshaped the whole world in 1964, uh, Newton. Okay. Isaac Newton in 1964 birth and also and, uh, during his life, okay, he invented many things, of course. Uh, first, of course, uh, Newton's law of motion, right? First law, second law, or third law. And also optics and also calculus. Okay, three important uh, uh, kind of stop. So of course, uh, for us, the most important part is uh, he is the one who okay observes the world and defines something what we call law. Law means that uh, that never change. Okay, but however, that kind of law will be inaccurate what we call or not so exact in two conditions. The condition one, 
okay, is the law of uh, general relativity. It's the law of the universe, planet and galaxy, which have two characteristics. The first, they are very massive, the like planet, okay, or uh, uh, a moon or sun or something like this, okay, or the galaxy itself. And also for some object to uh, moving very fast, that close to speed. So that's why we have two kind of relativity, general and okay, specific relativity, two kind. And also we have an other world, other extreme, what we call the subatomic world, world of very minor and small okay things. Okay, we call this the, the subatomic world of quantum mechanics. Uh, of course, the major scientists and inventors for quantum mechanics is uh, of uh, Heisenberg. Heisenberg, the birth is the 1901, okay. In fact, they, they are the same year between the Heisenberg and also Einstein, okay. And uh, if you know, they have several very important arguments, okay. For Einstein, okay, uh, until he died, he is still quite fussy, okay, and uh, uh, puzzled about the world of uh, quantum mechanics. Because in the world of quantum mechanics, we have something very, very special what we call the uncertainty principle. Uncertainty principle, I will go through this a bit okay, later on. It uh, tells us that uh, everything in fact is not uncertain until you see it, which means everything can happen in terms of uh, quantum mechanics. In fact, I can tell you that, that it, it's true. In fact, in terms of finance, everything can be changed until you see the market at that moment, right? In fact, anything happens is something like this. So the, after one year, I can tell you that the more and more people uh, believe in this kind of uh, theory and concept. So again, we will go through in detail later on, of course. So in terms of equation, okay, Newton's law of motion easy, uh, F equal to MA. Although it's so easy, but it relates to important thing. Okay, the mass of an object, when it moves with acceleration, when they come together with the force. Okay, F equal to MA. And the funny thing is uh, for Einstein also come up with a very simple and famous equation. We all know E equal to MC squared, right? So for example, uh, for a mass of object, when it close to the speed of light, okay, the energy you can release is equal to MC squared. So you can imagine how can it be done? It can only be done in an atomic bomb or a nuclear reactor. In fact, the whole nuclear reaction is using this formula, okay? It's the conversion of the mass into energies by the radioactive uh, isotope, okay? Say, for example, the plutonium in a nuclear reactor, okay? So it is a very important uh, uh, equation. And this equation, in fact, is very funny. Uh, it's not only saying E equal to mc squared, but what Einstein talking about is uh, a mass of a very small particle, m. If you want to release the whole energy for this mass, okay, the whole energy will be equal to mc squared. So c is what c is the speed of light, phi times uh, ten to the power eight. So you can you you can measure just a small stone. If it can release at pure energies, it will. I can tell you that it can be used for a whole city for one year. But of course, whether you can do it or not is another thing, right? Okay. So uh, the third one is uh, Hankensberg. Hankensberg equation is what we call the Schrodinger equation. In fact, uh, although it seems to be complex, uh, but I will show you again and again, and how to determine it, okay, and uh, how to calculate it during the course, okay, because we come up with some more simple equation and method to do the calculation, so don't worry. But in terms of the equation, they are all symmetrical, you can see. Uh, in Hankensberg, Schrodinger equation, again, is the equal side. The equal side is between, uh, the chi is the wave function, this one is the wave function of a particular subatomic particle, okay? So uh, they are all related to the, this function together with the E is the energy level. So we will talk about this. It's a kind of a try to relate the particle, okay, wave energy with the energy level. That's all thing. So we will talk about this later on because it's the core part of our course, okay? So uh, very interesting, don't worry. So for the laws of uh, 
role of the classical mechanics. So we have several characteristics. First, we so call it the physical world. It's the world we are all living and experience, right? So all the motion of matter in this world is uh, strictly governed by the three laws of motion. Remember that the Newton's law, the second law, and the third law. And uh, this law, it tells us uh, what it tells us the cause and effect, which means if you drop something, okay, from the top of the building, according to the gravity, it will accelerate and falling down, right? No exception. So this is what we call the effect. Cause meaning that when you drop something, the effect it will drop down. So you can in determine Newton's law of motion is the kind of uh, uh, governing all those objects, the cause and the effect. So, uh, in fact, it's, it's very true in the 1980s something when the Newton uh, discovered that law of physics. But however, in the uh, 1901, okay, when we have uh, the new theory of uh, quantum mechanics and generativity for uh, instance, okay, uh, this law seems to be not so what we call universal or accurate. So how come? So however, when this law of physics only hold under two important conditions. First, the object of uh, normal size, which means is a size we can observe and measure in the physical world. So for example, uh, football, your desktop, okay, your body, or even a building, okay, they are okay. But for some object really large, say for example, the pendant, okay, or uh, or any cosmic material, so it will not be true. The main reason why is uh, in that case, okay, the whole uh, gravity wave field will be distorted because of this uh, gravity of the object itself, because it's so massive, okay. And uh, the second condition is uh, the object moving in what we call a normal speed. What is called a normal speed? The funny thing for uh, Relativity, no matter it's a special or general relativity, yes. All the object can accelerate, but up to a certain speed. C, what is called the speed of light. Okay, so you may ask why. In fact, I don't. I also don't know. And also is the reason why I take uh, physics as, as my major in Hong Kong U in the year 1989. I really want to know why. But sorry, up to now I still don't know why. But it's true. Any object can accelerate up to this bit. The main reason why is uh, in terms of uh, relativity, uh, known as what we call special relativity. Okay, uh, we have one important theory, what we call the uh, time dilation. Time dilation means that uh, uh, very simple. When the object is accelerate, okay, it will become massive and massive. So massive that it will become infinitely heavy when it comes up to speed of light. So in other words, for an object to accelerate, it will become more and more difficult to accelerate the speed close to the speed of light. Okay, so that is the other reason why. Okay, one funny thing for Einstein is that he just proposed this idea at the beginning. And uh, you can see his uh, original paper. I, I have a uh, name in the book. Is uh, he also can't explain why. Right. No, no one see why. But it seemed to be true. The main reason why is uh, from Einstein in 1925 uh, proposed this idea, generativity, E equal MC squared to thing, up to now almost 100 years, right? And uh, all the experimental results are true according to his uh, basic theory. So that's why we all believe that. But uh, we still don't know why. But it's true. Okay. So in other words, Okay, maybe a simple summary. In the physical world of Newton, everything is happy. You see in the physical world. What is mean physical world is the world we see, we observe, we experience, right? But however, under two conditions, it has problem. First, when you observe something really very big and massive, like the moon and the sun and the glass, or something moving super fast, okay, like the electron, Right, proton. That's all thing. So, uh, sorry, it can't be true. So, 
knife or something like this, right? Uh, okay, the second rule, the rule of uh, general relativity. In fact, it's my favorite topic, I can tell you. Uh, at the time in Hong Kong U, okay, lucky we have very, two very good professors, Professor Wong and also Professor Koso. One is an expert from Oxford on uh, general relativity, and other is a video, video expert on quantum mechanics. Okay, and we are lucky at that time. In Hong Kong, we have two very bright professors tell us the details on these two totally different, but uh, closely related uh, kind of theory. Okay. So in the role of general relativity, as you can see, what we are talking about is uh, we all experience and believe that for a planet, that kind of thing, okay, because it's so massive, okay, because of the gravity, it can distort two things. Okay, first, the gravitational field, and also light, and also light. So you may ask, how can we do that? Uh, we read many books on the uh, Big Bang Theory or general relativity, you know, from observation during the eclipse, we will know that. We will see the the light is being banned. Because in general theory, right, light will not be banned because it's speed of light, okay? So no one can, can, can ban the light. But sorry to tell you that under this special scenario in a massive planet, everything will be distort, including the field and also the light. Okay, we, we will talk about this uh, with a time later on, okay? So general relativity is a geometric theory of gravity, gravitation published by the Einstein in 1915. In fact, almost the same years, I can tell you that, uh, Hankinsberg proposed uh, quantum mechanics in 1925, uh, if I'm correct, okay, you will see that in the next slide. So almost the same year, and they know each other, and they always argue in US, <laughs> of course. So one belief in something very big, Okay, one belief in something happened very small, okay, and all the times uh, Einstein are not comfort with what Hankins read proposed, okay, that uh, some, all the time nothing is certain until you see it. But in fact, I can tell you the whole world like this, okay. Uh, something you are certain until you observe and see it. And the story to tell you that later on, you, I, I will show you that, okay. When you observe something happen, you will affect that object. And that is very important. Because uh, before that, in all physical experiments, we all believe that the observer, so for example, you try to measure the acceleration for a particular uh, car, okay? If, you, if someone tells you that your observation of the car will affect your observation, you don't believe, right? But sorry, in the world of uh, quantum mechanics, uh, this is true, I will show you with a very fancy an, uh, animation. So it provides a unified description of gravity as a geometric property of space and time, what we call space-time. So one important theory for uh, Einstein is uh, he proposed a very unique idea. is time, time itself, is something very special. Because before that, we all believe time cannot be reversed. Time cannot be stopped, because time is time itself. But in terms of uh, Einstein, at the year, he, uh, when he's out of age, I remember that, he always say that at the same time you see something, all the past of all the future are happening at the same time. In his theory of general relativity, you all believe that, and also I believe that. All happening at the same time. But time itself is also a kind of uh, substance, okay? But of course it's a different nature. But uh, in that particular theory, we believe that it also can be reversed. So that is the important part and, and the fussy part, okay? But sorry, but don't worry. Our course don't go into deep because uh, we are not GR subject, okay? But uh, it's interesting to know, okay? So to describe something, the velocity is something small, not small compared to the speed of light, and uh, at that time, special relativity is okay, which means when you try to observe something moving very fast, but not very big, okay, uh, you can use what we call special relativity, more easy to calculate and tell that. In Hong Kong, you, I did start the first year uh, on one single course, course uh, special relativity, and then second year is general relativity. 
And quantum mechanics is the three year course, okay? Starting year, year one to year three. So it's a very tough, but very interesting subject, of course. So in case of subject that being very massive, okay, no matter how the speed is, okay, but all the time it's moving very fast, I tell General activity can be applied. So we have two, two scenarios. When something that is not so big, not so big means that we can observe in our physical world and measurement, but moving super fast, close to the speed of light. Uh, so for example, the, uh, an, an object, okay, ball, something like this, you can use uh, special relativity. Okay, and this special relativity all the time will deal with some very fun, funny thing called the the uh, twins paradox. Twins paradox tells us that, uh, so for example, when there is a uh, uh, twins, one is in the world, one is uh, uh, actually not go to other world. Okay, uh, if the space shuttle close to the speed of light, and then it came back. Okay, after maybe ten years, uh, under special relativity. The one that return will be younger because of what we call time dilation. Very important. I, I remember that in uh, in the first year of special relativity, I really first about that kind of uh, uh, theory. In fact, that is true. Nowadays, uh, scientists in the Europe already test that kind of thing. Time dilation is true, which means time is not always the same in nature. But the funny thing is that. Uh, Time itself, you cannot measure, right? Okay, because time is for measurement. But uh, under special condition, you can measure because you can compare, right, to uh, what we call a uh, uh, frame of reference. Okay, so change parallel is talking about that kind of thing. Okay, and then when something is really massive, like the planet, the moon, and the galaxy, okay, we have to use uh, general relativity because. Uh, we talk about the whole geometry for the uh, uh, gravitational field distortion, just like this one. Okay, so many scientists, okay, in terms of uh, cosmologies or high energy physics, they are talking about the kind of thing. So general relativity is the basic for the current uh, cosmological models uh, into a very important theory. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry, what we call Big Bang theory. Okay. Big Bang Theory tell, uh, tell us one important thing is that with what? As you know, uh, under so many years, under observation of the planet movement, we believe in one thing. <coughs> Just a minute. We believe in one thing. It's what, what we call the uh, wet ship. Okay. Hong Yi. Is what is uh, we believe every planet we observe is moving away from us very fast, very fast. Of course, it's not close to the speed of light, but really fast, faster than any airplanes, any super shuttle you 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 think about, including ourselves. So what what is the meaning? The meaning is every single object are moving again uh, away from each other, or in other words, the whole universe are what expanding. So if you believe in that theory, which is a kind of observation, you, you can't do believe, okay? So you will think about it in the other way, which means the whole world should be start, the whole universe, as you say, should be started at from a one single point, what we call the singularity point, right? So what happened? Which means under Big Bang theory, we believe, we believe, okay? The whole world starts from nothing, and then it expands, what we call Big Bang theory. And the whole universe exists and moving away from each other at a, a very high speed, super speed, in fact. So that is what we are talking about. In fact, it's true. Every single observation in terms of uh, Big Bang Theory, in terms of general relativity for the observation for the band movement, especially during eclipse, okay, uh, all agree with that theory. So it's true. Whether you believe or not, it's true. So why? Oh, we all don't know, sorry. So, uh, in other words, it's the world of quantum mechanics, okay? So, in terms of quantum mechanics, we talk about an other world, more funny, the extreme small world, what we call subatomic world. Subatomic world means the world of the atom and inside the atom. 
right? Just like you see in this chart, okay? Just a, uh, what I call, <coughs> uh, simulation. So, quantum mechanics and quantum field theory is two different kind of things, okay? They're different kind of things. Uh, describe the nature of the smallest scale of energy level or subatomic particle, okay? Including what, including the atom, the nucleus, the electron, and so on, and the proton, okay? Or the positron, okay? There is one, something called positron. It's the, just like electron. Electron is negative mass, right? uh, negative charge, right? Positron, just like electron, but positive charge. So when they combine together, they will cancel each other and release energy. Okay, so it's a very important concept in hydrogen energy physics. In fact, all the nuclear reactors, fusion reactors, we, we talk about that kind of thing, okay? But again, don't worry. We won't talk about this in our course because we are not talking about high energy physics. No worry. So different from classical physics, quantum mechanics describe energy, momentum, angular momentum, and related qualities. So we call this the quantization. So this theory tells us a very funny thing is uh, if you have studied chemistry in high school, the teacher will tell you one funny thing, right? Every single object consists of atom, right? So we have chemistry and uh, they are all combined together. Okay, we don't know how and we don't know why. And each atom itself, just like uh, uh, our universe or our solar planet, right? The center is the what we call the nucleus. Within the nucleus, we have the proton and neutron, right? And outside, we have what we call electron. And they all run and run just like uh, the solar system, the different planet, right? Again, so at the time, just uh, one funny thing, each of them have uh, what we call our orbit. That cannot be changed. So uh, what we talk about the atom structure is something like this. Every single atom, no matter what, so for example, a uh, 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 carbon atom, a uh, uh, a calcium atom or any atom, okay, they have the atom nucleus with proton and neutron. And outside this, we have uh, electron, maybe some, maybe many, okay. But the funny thing, the tissue tell you what is all energy level are discrete, and we have some calculation, right? So that is the funny thing we call this quantization. But uh, I remember at the time I'm studying high school, okay. Also asked uh, the teacher why. Uh, of course, uh, we all don't know. <laughs> Okay, at that time. But now we have some ideas. I will talk about this later. Okay. So all the object and matter in this world have uh, two properties. Because so my so so small. So they exist in two property. The particle property, what you observe. And the wave property you can't observe. So you can imagine just like a bing bang ball is a particle or a water wave. Which means all the Subatomic particles, say for example, the electron, okay? Either it is uh, some op particle you can measure and observe, or you cannot observe just a wave. Okay, wave is something you can observe, right? You can observe only what the wave phenomenon, like the refraction, diffraction, and interference. Okay, when you, if you still remember your high school stuff for optics, right? And that's all thing. So for the subatomic particle, they have a very funny property. Sometimes it can be observed as a wave, sometimes it can be observed as a particle. Okay, so that is one of the major characteristics. And also, the most important part is uh, what we call uncertainty principle. Uncertainty principle, or in full name, is a Hankins period uncertainty principle. It's uh, in the year 1941, Hankins, in one of the course in Cornell, he tell people everything observed in the physical world, especially in the subatomic world, are uncertain. Uncertain meaning that uh, uh, no matter how precise your measuring equipment is, you cannot 100% sure. Do uh, a couple. It's either the position, okay, or and the speed. Which means when you can 100% sure about the position, you cannot 100% sure about the speed or other way around. So well funny, right? And, uh, but I can tell you again, at that time, many people passed about that. But nowadays, we all prove it's true. It's true. Okay. Because there are some uh, high speed reactor in Europe, the CERN, and also do the measurement. And, and it's true, that phenomenon. The only thing you may ask why Hengsberg know this, uh, that, that is a mystery. Okay. 
So quantum mechanics believe that the world we are experience, what we call the experience world, is just one of the possible universe we are living, what we call the version of appearance, VOA, very important concept in parallel universe theory. Okay, very important concept, very important concept. So as the theory to describe all the fundamental particles and the event, quantum mechanics to be a perfect tool to model any fundamental phenomena in the physical world. So for example, finance. So as I always say, finance is also something like this. All the time you can, say for example, the Dow Jones Index or the Hansen Index. All the time we observe the price, just like a particle, right, movement. But uh, as a whole, big picture, you observe it as a pattern, a wave pattern, in fact. Okay, so it's a wave, of course. So some kind of analog. If you may ask why, in fact, they are the same. So you may imagine when we talk about every single thing in the subatomic world will be like that. The object we, we see every day, in fact, is a collection of the subatomic particle. But the observation method is different. <clears throat> they are the same thing. You know what I mean? Okay. Which means for every single object, when you assume this object, okay, inside, level to each other, at the end, they are also atomic particle. That is following the quantum mechanics or quantum field theory of the movement of the characteristic. That's what, what we are saying. Okay. So maybe we take a little break, okay, and then we continue. Okay, uh, let's uh, move on. Okay, uh, next, um, we talk about something very interesting. Uh, <clears throat> the two sides of the same coin, chapter 1.2. Uh, from this, uh, let me show you a very funny and important uh, quantum mechanics okay, uh, experiment. Okay? What we call the uh, wave particle duality, double slit experiment. In fact, this experiment tells us a very funny thing. Before we start, uh, uh, let me tell you some basic information first, okay? And uh, this experiment is something like this. There will be an electron or proton uh, uh, beam, okay? And it will generate the proton or electron. Uh, they are the same, okay, because they are all subatomic particles. And to two slit, okay? And uh, by observation, okay? There will be different uh, uh, results you can see. Whether you look in to observe the motion or not. Okay, it's a very famous equation uh, uh, phenomenon in the year 1920 something when we discover uh, the basic phenomenon of uh, quantum mechanics, the wave particle duality. So this experiment just want to show us one thing: is that for some very small particle like the photon or electron, that sort of thing. Uh, it exists in two characteristic. Either it is a particle or it is a wave. Okay, let me show you. So for the first one is uh, is what is a. Uh, it's a it's shark bin, okay, into the backdrop, okay. And uh, if this particle is particle, it should be diversified. There's no pattern, right? But if this is a wave, this is a wave, okay, it should be have pattern. We all know when we have two openings for a wave, that will be what we call interference. Right? So a shine bin. Okay, so it's the first. The first experiment is a quantum object like the electron or photon when you shine to it okay so it will every time it will shoot onto the uh, backdrop just like a particle discussion right one another so by doing that when you do many times it will be case number one right so every time an object falls into this okay it will be somewhere like this but but when we have observer, it will be a distinct object. Which means, if you don't observe, it will just like a wave. If it observe, it will become a particle. So what, what, what we are saying is, when we observe, 
but we observe. Okay. All the particles will be distinct. They have no interaction. They have no relationship. Right? So that will not be a beam. But if we won't observe, this particle will just like a wave. It will all related. So we call this a complication. So you, 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 you can think about something. If it is an object, okay, and you bin a lot of objects, because the object and object itself have no complication, so it should be no pattern. But if it is a wave, there will be a wave pattern. So in other words, for a particle object, a particle uh, of a subatomic scale, either it is a particle or it is a, a wave, it depends on whether you see it or not. So, quite funny, right? So, logic behind is very logical, I tell you what. If you have an observer, observe some particle, no matter what. So, because you can observe, so all the time it exists as an object. So, we will follow our object property. Case number one. However, when you don't observe, it will be a wave of a particle. So, just like water wave or night wave. So, they will be a pattern. So in other words, uh, at the time we all don't know why. In, in fact, for now we also don't know why. Okay? But it's true. So uh, it's a very important discovery. Tell us one important thing: whether you observe the objects, it will affect the object. That is important. Now I say again: whether you make the observation, your observation itself, in fact, is changing the observation result. Not only the location of motion, but also the nature itself. So it's a, you, you can imagine it's kind of a tricky problem. Is what if you have a photon detector? A photon detector can detect a photon because it can detect a photon. So once it can detect a photon, it becomes a photon, and a photon itself, what by definition is an object, right? So it's a true and false problem. So some people say it's uh, not a physics problem, it's a, a philosophical, philosophical problem. Uh, you can say so. Because uh, the most important uh, philosopher, Kant, okay, also saying that what we observe the world related to the observer. So just like the observer wearing a, a color glass, when he wears a red glass, all the things he sees will be in red, right? Light red or dark red. When he wear a green glass, all the things you see is green. So, same thing. So, what I'm saying is, when you have a photon detector, because it's a photon detector, so you can detect photon. So, all the photon will become a photon particle. So, no pattern. But when you don't have an observe of a detector, because uh, no detection, it will become a wave. <laughs> so, the only thing you, you, are, you are fussy is, why? Why the same thing have two characteristics? And they are different because you observe or not. That is a good point because I can tell you that. Uh, for Einstein, although he don't believe in quantum mechanics, but he believed in one thing. In the year uh, 1946, I remember, he, in one of his talks okay, in Princeton, uh, at that time he was preaching in Princeton, he said, uh, we all don't know what happened to the moon, whether it's here or not, okay, without seeing it. So you may say, same for you, right? So whether you see or not, in fact, it affect the observation result. So quite funny. The main reason why is uh, in the past so many years, uh, as uh, experimental scientists, all the scientists believe that the observer should not and will not and could not affect the observing thing, the object you observe. But the truth is not in the subatomic world. Subatomic world, everything can be changed until you make the observation. Now let me, let me repeat again. In quantum mechanics, we all believe everything can be changed until you make the observation. So that part is important. Right? Okay. So uh, the way particle theory in financial market, we all exist, I can tell you. In financial market, we can observe any weight particle theory. How? Any particle instant. We can observe and measure the price index. Say, for example, the Dow Jones or the Hang Seng or anything. So, as a whole, the market itself also acts like a wave. 
The most important and famous one is what we call Elliott Wave. Elliott Wave is a very important concept in stock market. Okay, and uh, uh, believer in Elliott Wave believe in their uh, five different wave pattern of uh, stock market. So what he believe is not a single price particles, but the whole pattern of the market itself. So in terms of quantum mechanics, we are talking about the same thing, right? Either it's the particle itself, like this, uh, particle index, or it is a particular pattern, the wave. So the only thing is, uh, how can we model the financial market using quantum mechanics and quantum field theory? Okay, when we feel believe in that. Okay. So what I'm saying is, the whole quantum finance is to borrow the concept of quantum mechanics and quantum field theory in order to model the financial market. If you let me to use one sentence to explain this, not difficult, right? But of course, it, how to implement that is the difficult part. As I mentioned in my uh, beginning of my book, okay, the preface, I'm telling you that uh, I have this idea when I'm studying as a student in 1989, studied the quantum mechanics in Hong Kong U. And at that time, I asked my uh, professor on quantum mechanics whether we can um, model finance in by quantum mechanics. He said, theoretically speaking, it should be yes. But of course, you have to do some modeling. So the, almost over 30 years, okay? So after 20 years, I have some ideas and uh, start to uh, model the quantum finance model. And then I set the quantum finance uh, forecast website, as you see. And also I promote this concept, the forecast, in Shenzhen for 10 years around. Okay, as uh, at that time I'm, I'm, I'm working as an intro, uh, as a CTO and also a chief analyst, just like that. Okay, the chief of IT and also the expert on this part. Okay, the main reason why I do so is because uh, in order to implement the system, you need to need the uh, IT team. That is the main reason, just like here now. Okay, so, uh, so uh, the third part. So quantum field theory and the birth of uh, quantum finance. Let's see the time. Uh, it should be sufficient. Yeah, 45, okay. So we have almost uh, two hours. Don't worry, I, I won't uh, uh, use up two hours because it's quite fatigue for you guys uh, to have a lecture of 32 hours and stop, okay. So, so th that is the reason I, I always say the uh, cyber teaching is good. Anytime you can take a break, and then you can move on. And also, in, in terms of uh, the professor part of view, we don't be controlled by the physical uh, time, okay, restrictions. Okay, and uh, as I always say, the restriction is mainly because uh, of the uh, tapering, because uh, we have so many, uh, so many staff and so many students, okay. So the, it's more relaxed when we talk about uh, the cyber teaching. And also one of the major good points I think is that uh, uh, you can watch my vi video broadcast, okay, uh, video lecture I should say, and uh, anytime you want. Okay, and uh, so that make sure that uh, you can understand. Okay, uh, quantum field theory and the birth of uh, quantum finance. Okay, some very basic ideas. Quantum field theory is the united physical framework to describe the motion and dynamic of a fundamental particle, what we call finance particle. Uh, I give the name. It combine phi concept. First, Maxwell field equation, or we, what we call wave equation. Vessel relativity. And quantum mechanics, phi in the one, my favorite. Uh, quantum field theory, okay, treat all fundamental particles as an excited state, what we call quantum, and the underneath field, quantum field. In quantum field theory, atom itself and emit electromagnetic radiation in terms of light most of the time, and tie the oscillation with the energies, okay, and uh, with different discrete state, what we call quantum at harmonic oscillator. Uh, we will go back to it later on, don't worry, okay? Just simple concept first. And all this energy level is discrete, so they are not continuous, okay? 
And all this can be described as a, what we call a Feynman diagram. Uh, that is a fancy part, but I'm going to into it because it's quite complex. Feynman is uh, one of the major scientists in quantum field theory and got the Nobel Prize on that. One of, of his uh, major inventions is what we call the Feynman diagram. I will show you. Very funny. So this is a basic Feynman diagram of uh, electron and uh, positron. Okay, And uh, when they come up together, they will release pure energy. Okay, and we call this the annihilation. A uh, very important concept. Okay, so cells just like cell destruction and release energies. Continue. So quantum field theory and the birth of quantum finance. Again, quantum finance is a newly developed interdisciplinary subject. Uh, now that we call this a uh, eco physics. It's a combination of uh, economic theory and also uh, uh, fundamental physics. Okay, so we call this uh, ecophysics. So the first published book, An Introduction to Ecophysics, Correlation and Complexity in France, in 1999. So it's long, long ago, just uh, uh, 20 years before, right? It's the time I write my first book, e-commerce. Because I, my e-commerce book is being published in the year 2000. And we start writing the book in uh, 1999, something like this. Okay, at the same time, almost. And the model E codes physicists view this as an application of a binary motion. Okay, binary motion means uh, something that cannot measurement, total random, something like that. But it's not random. It's the funny thing. Seems to be random, but not random. And now we call this a chaos theory. Okay. And uh, some people will say this as a kind of a statistical physics. In fact, the physics have different types. Statistical physics meaning that they are using statistical theory to model some physical equation. Or physical phenomena. So during the past decade, various method and theory have been proposed for stock price and return analysis, option pricing, and portfolio analysis. So uh, nowadays uh, we have a new book on current finance using totally different method. So in this course, we will discuss how to combine quantum mechanics and quantum field theory. Uh, including path integral, Hamiltonian, wave function, quantum oscillator, and AI tools. Okay, But don't worry, we are not focused on the mathematics. There is no mathematical calculation. No worry, not much. Okay, A little bit, maybe. But not solving equations, that kind of thing. We are programming. In fact, it's a programming subject. Okay, So don't worry, it's not a calculation subject. Okay, That is the funny part, the uh, interesting part. What we focus on is make use of the basic theory using the micro and analytical technique, I will show you how, to model the financial energy price, what we call the QPL, quantum price level, okay, Lenzi Zhaowei. And how to make use of this level together with the chaotic new network to do forecast. And then how to make use of the trading strategies to do the trading. So more, it's more or less a computer programming and trading course more than a uh, 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 mathematical course, okay? So don't be misled by the name, okay? Don't worry. So, uh, introduction to quantum finance, okay? The philosophy for quantum finance, unification theory of quantum uh, uncertainty principle to the chaos and first logic. So, uncertainty principle, ah, my favorite. So, in 1927, Hankensburg, okay, again, Stay that more precisely the position of some particle is determined. The less precise is the momentum, which means you cannot observe the particle location and also its momentum, which means the uh, MV, okay, mass times the velocity at the same time, 100% sure. Uh, he doesn't say why, but he say it's just claim. But the uh, funny thing is, it's true after 100 years, okay. All he says is true. So in terms of mathematics, something like this, the position for the point, uh, location, and also position for the uh, the second is the the uh, momentum when they come up together should be bigger than or equal to okay Planck constant. This one is okay for two, which means it won't be zero all the time. It is positive, which means all the time you must have error in the observation. So unlike classical physics, uncertain principles state that all the events happen in a quantum state and we what we call collapse into a particular reality, 
when you take observation. Uh, long time ago in the university, I, I, I heard a talk by a professor in Oxford saying fun, something very funny. Uh, at the end of it, something like this. So, for example, when you go to a restaurant and you order something, according to a menu, right? And then the, the, uh, the uh, waiter, okay, after half an hour, give you something. We have to open the cover. You don't know what inside, right? When you open the cover, you know. So it's what, what you say. Without observation, anything can happen until you make the observation. All the reality will come up to a single reality. So if you are genius, is that what we are talking about is a parallel universe, which means all things happen in different universes. When you take an observation, that particular universe collapses into what you call the reality, what you call the world you experience. So it's the same thing. We talk about parallel universe, right? So this phenomenon is also associated with a very much paradox called the uh, stranger cats paradox. This one. Uh, for all those who have heard of this beforehand, we know what is this. Is the uh, this and uh, it's a paradox. In fact, it's uh, invented by uh, stranger. So it's called stranger cat. This uh, there is a cat, a fast of poison and a radioactive substance inside. Okay. If uh, there is an internal monitor, a GM counter, say for example, GM counter will count the radioactivity, right? And detect the radioactivity, okay, for the uh, atom decay, you know. The fast is broken and release the poison and kill the cat. Okay. What we are talking about is in terms of quantum mechanics implying that after a while, the cat is a mouth at the same time, simultaneous life and death until you take a look and open the box. So which means, in terms of quantum mechanics, we can't say whether it is life or it is death. Okay, it's both life and death. <laughs> Funny, right? Until you open the box and see. So when you open the box, there is only one case, right? Either alive or death. Cannot be both. But as long as you haven't made the observation, anything happens. So later on, the, uh, it seems to be too philosophical, right? Later on, we will make use of some very famous AI technology, what we call fuzzy logic, to do that kind of thing. Fuzzy logic is, in fact, is the more or less the same idea, okay? But not so few, so, so frequent. You say everything might not be black or white. It can be fuzzy, fuzzy in the sense that uh, either it will be close to zero or one, right? So that's something more, more, more reasonable, right? So that's why we have the fuzzy logic. And uh, why we have first logic later on to tell you that is the uh, we all believe that the world we experience, uh, no matter we like or not, everything in fact is not so certain. You're only certain when you make the observation. That that's true. So the the point is how can you make this observation, or how can you describe this particular verbal? Is uh, you are using uncertain number. We call this a uh, falsification. So later on we tell you that okay. Uh, super important, and also the, um, with many applications. I tell you that uh, later on, that uh, every electronic appliances, say for example the uh, air conditioner, now they are all using fuzzy logic for the uh, uh, temperature control, humidity control. And later on, I'll tell you that. Okay? So they are all related. Uh, that is what I want to say. So unification theory of uncertainty principle to chaos theory and fuzzy logic. So. Can uncertainty principle be also applied to finance market or just a fancy thought? The truth is, any experienced trader will tell you that it's true. Without look into the market, everything can happen. You know it not until you observe the market. That's true because every second or single second, the market price are moving. Whether you can predict it is up to you, of course but you are not certain until it happens, right? Or until you make the observation or open the market window to see, right? See. So again, how can we model it using technology we have? Okay, that, that is the realistic question, right? So by doing this, I spent 20 more years to do so, of course. In fact, there are two technologies provide an excellent and a not to uncertainty principle. They are the first logic and chaos theory. First logic provides an easy to implement solution to model 
multiple attribute happen for any so-called first variable. Chaos theory provides a framework and mathematical model to simultaneous high chaotic and random like phenomenon, what we call deterministic chaos. Okay. These two theories are very important theory and very inferiorical theory that affect AI. So fall into a bubble. And this is what we call the uh, butterfly effect, okay? And the uh, chaotic thing. Okay, well, I'll talk about this in the chaos theory. Okay. So you can see after we uh, uh team my natural or within the boat, you will believe that and you will agree that different kind of technologies, just like uncertainty principle, quantum mechanics, just like fuzzy logic or chaos theory or neural network. It seems to be different. In fact they are the same. Same in the sense that they are the different tools to observe the role and model it. And they are related. That is important. That's what I, I want to say in the book and discourse. Okay. So the next part is the basic component of uh, quantum finance. So uh, this part is a summary part for this uh, first chapter. So basic component. We will, the whole book we talk about the basic component and different subcomponent. Okay, it consists of this funny thing. At the center, the center is the quantum field, the quantum price field. So we will talk about this first, and then we will talk about uh, the new networks and new oscillator, and then we will talk about other AI module like fuzzy logic, genetic algorithm, chaos and fatal. Okay, in fact there are many others, but uh, I do not want to put too many things into a single book. But they are all the basics, which means, as a summary, we have the quantum price field at the center that defines the whole financial world and the price level. Just like, uh, you imagine, it's just like a uh, uh, particular financial particle as uh, the sun and the different uh, object, okay, circuit in different energy level, uh, their price, in fact. And then how to model it and forecast it, we are using different AI method, new network, New oscillator, okay, and uh, first logic genetic algorithm, fatal and chaos, okay. They are all symmetric, I can tell you, okay, very interesting. Don't worry, I will give you some basic understanding first. The most important part is uh, how to make use of this concept to write your program. So the program part is uh, very important. So remember to attend uh, Jim's uh, 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 workshop and lab, okay. So the first tier. The energy field layer. At the core, they have the quantum field. And the second layer, the new network layer. Provide the new dynamics. And also all the oscillator. And the third tier, the fintech tier. We have the AI technologies. We have the different tools. Uh, new network, fuzzy logic, chaos theory, factor, and so on. Uh, after that, I will uh, tell you something about the time paper and also the project, so that you have some idea, okay? You hope you have some extra time. And the last part is the application layer, okay? All the application. Quantum price view. We have the price prediction. We have the trend prediction. Trend prediction means uh, in the short term, I tell you the high low rate. In the long term, I tell you the, the direction, whether you should buy or sell. Okay, so we have two types of investment all the time. And the trading, okay? how to write a, a, what we call a trading robot for trading. So all included in this course, okay? So again, don't worry about the mathematics. We are not a mathematics course. You don't need to derive any uh, a complex equation. You only need to apply it into some computer model, okay? And uh, we have already have some um, different toolkit for quantum finance so that you can use okay, to develop your uh, forecast system. Okay, so don't worry, okay, enjoy this. So, uh, the next chapter, we'll talk about the fundamental of uh, quantum field theory, okay? So, enjoy this. Before we stop the lecture, uh, just take a break for us, and then I will spend uh, at least uh, 20 minutes, okay, on talking about the term paper and also uh, on the, um, what I say, on the uh, group project, okay. So tell me. Okay, uh, let's continue. So uh, at the end of this uh, this lecture, okay, let me show you a bit uh, 
about the, the term paper and also the project, okay? Uh, so when you click into the iSpace, uh, let me show you. So here is the workshop, okay? Uh, Jim will tell you one by one. And um, the term paper. Okay. So when you click this, okay, I already click this. So the pen paper is something like this, is the uh, form group, okay, so first of all you form group, okay, and uh, Jim will tell you the detail, okay, how many people group, for me is, um, uh, for me I'm really relaxed, uh, you can be two or three, but uh, I think uh, no more than, no more than four, okay, uh, you can talk with Jim, okay, depends on your, uh, his subjection, but first of all you form group first, I think, and uh, for each group, okay, uh, as mentioned in the lecture, quantum finance is a course discipline the logic with uh, integration of uh, different technologies, okay? Quantum theory and uh, computation finance and also AI, okay? Uh, particularly in AI, okay? And uh, in this course, we will go through uh, new network first logic, genetic algorithm, uh, chaos theory, and factors, okay? At the basic requirement for a term paper, students are required to choose one topic at least, okay? For the technologies and with the material I provide to you, okay, I already collect the paper, so they only need to read the papers and write a term papers, okay, to describe what it is, how it works, what is the latest research and contemporary technologies about it, and how it can be used to integrate it with the quantum finance, okay, uh, and potential application in financial engineering. So what I'm talking about is two things. First, you choose the topics. For example, uh, a new network. Right. So you can see, I have already downloaded the paper for you. You only need to click and download. Okay. Of course, you can find other paper, but please spend time on this paper first. Okay. And then uh, choose the topics, see what you would like, and focus on topic to describe what is this kind of uh, technologies. So we call this the uh, literature review. Very important for uh, research and uh, uh, master degree. Okay, you focus on uh, topics and you do some research. So I uh, talk about how it works and uh, what is the latest technologies and uh, how can this technology be integrated to uh, quantum finance. So try your best. Okay, group together, choose the topics, read the papers and try to understand the paper, describe it, and also uh, describe how it can be related and used in uh, quantum finance, okay? So the topics we have are many. We have uh, artificial neural networks, okay, just show you. This, okay, many papers. Some is my paper, some is others. And uh, first logic, a lot. In fact, first logic have a lot of paper. Very good papers. I will spend some time to talk of, about something. Okay. So the genetic algorithm. Okay. Very good. Right. And then the chaos theory again. And also uh, factor. And the support vector machine. And also the also okay, many. And uh, of course, uh, during the lecture, I will describe each technology. Okay, but uh, I don't think you have to wait. Okay, so the, you focus on some topic first, and then you share with each other some paper, and then do the research. Okay, and at the end, write how these technologies, how this technology, can be used. Okay in your uh, in your work to say for example to uh, implement a trading system or a forecast system for finance okay and the uh, format okay uh, just like a common period okay or a uh, general period what I require is that the previous uh, length is the 10 to 12 okay and using the HV format so you can click here and I uh, have the format so detail you can also ask uh, Jim, the format itself, okay? And uh, when you click this, you will see the general format for the uh, paper 
and you follow this format, that's okay. Okay, that's part. Okay, so uh, the structure. Okay, so you have the title, and then uh, you have the abstract. Abstract is uh, in fact is a summary. Talk about your topics. You have the introduction, nature review, the proposed AI system, and summary. So six part. Okay, so without implementation, it is only a paper, right? So the implementation will be a project, of course. Uh, submission time, I'm uh, uh, thinking about is uh, the week 14. Most of the time, week 14 is the last week. So don't, don't, don't delay because it's the last week. Okay, I have to input them up. Of course, you, you can send me uh, a bit earlier, but I think uh, uh, week 40 is fair okay, to you guys. So it's the paper itself. So the next is the project. Project, in fact, uh, it can be, it can be. It can be related to your term paper. Okay, it can be. Or it can be separate frame. So group project is different. Group project is, um, okay, is uh, you choose uh, one uh, topic from a group, okay? Choose our topics. And also based on topics to uh, implement a uh, system. So, so apply this, okay? And also based on this to uh, Integrate with the system, and uh, again you can choose a fuzzy logic generator from whatever you want. Okay, so you can imagine that the project is an implementation of your paper, just like your five project. Different is a is a full group, a group of four or three, but uh, must be more than two because it's not easy. Okay, and uh, how about the uh, the financial uh, market? Okay. It can be any, it can be forest, it can be financial index, it can be cryptocurrency, whatever you want. But most of the students in the last year using the forest because uh, uh, every single uh, MT4 system has forest. Of course you can, okay. But better you choose uh, more than two to three top uh, uh, forest item to start with or uh, uh, financial index, okay. Not only one because you have to compare, okay. So data, I, I, I will tell you, okay, when you ask, okay, because it's not too early to say anything, right? Because just the beginning. But I just want you to know uh, uh, all the things are well prepared. Okay, you just need to follow uh, my our recommendation and do it as well. Okay, and uh, the only thing is uh, uh, the proposal. Okay, so you have to submit the proposal. Oh, that is wrong. Okay, it should be read uh, eight or, or nine. Okay, I will, I will change that. And again, uh, all the things that you submit, including the report and so on. And the source code should be with 40 together with our presentation. Okay, that is important. So, uh, and uh, hope, okay, you will uh, get all these things done, okay, and also be happy to ask me any questions about uh, this uh, lecture, okay. So, I think the most important part is that you can see in a, a cyber lecture, in fact, uh, we don't need to use up two of your hours because it's all condensed. Because uh, for me, I won't say any other things. Just focus on the lecture. So for you, I think it's more easy to to what I'm saying is uh, to uh, to get some idea, right? So uh, that's good. That's good. As I always say, is uh, uh, all the time focus on the lecture. Okay, and you will see. And uh, also the last thing I want to show you a bit uh, is the uh, the Quantum Finance website. Again, okay. take a bit. So as you can see, for this website, okay, so you have the uh, Chinese and English version, okay, and uh, when you click different topics, just let me, so, so, so. Uh, let's take a look, someone call me. So uh, you can see, okay. So for every single product, it have the forecast high low. So you may get some idea. Also, this forecast, I also have the weekly forecast. Really, in the sense that uh, you you can imagine, you can see the market as the daily fluctuation, right? And at the same time, you can see the market as the 
as a as a as a whole period change. So what I'm saying is that you can see the market day by day, or you can see the market week by week, right? When you see the market week by week, we will be a weekly forecast. That is the funny thing. Just that what I'm saying in the class, okay? So how you see the market in which time frame or in which method, it will reflect what you see. So it's a very true analog. So the whole quantum finance all the time is talking about how to model that kind of theory. And uh, the good thing is, uh, until now, more and more people all over the world believe in that kind of uh, 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 modeling because it's true. Because it's true. Okay. But if you don't see the market, you don't know what happened. So everything is changing, and you cannot control. So some people say it's chaotic. In fact, it's uh, what I call pure determ be deterministic chaos. Once you know the initial condition, you will know. But just a little bit change, the whole world will change. We call this the chaos theory. So anyway, uh, we stop there. Okay, I know all of you will try listen to more than one and uh, uh, half an hour. So, okay, lecture, pure lecture, without any break. So the, so one thing is, first of all, if you are tired, take a break and then listen. No need to spend the whole one and a half hours doing that. Because in a physical lecture, we already take a break, right? We always take a break. In fact, uh, as I always say, all the time I ask you a question is for you to take a break. And then you think about this. But of course, nowadays, because uh, you are using the uh, cyber mode, you can take a break by yourself, right? Y even more better. Okay, so thank you for coming for this lecture. And then next week, we will move on to the section chapter number two. Okay, again, for the book, let me say again. So if you have brought the book, okay, and then uh, you have any question about the uh, book, okay, just uh, uh, tell me and also send me WeChat so that I can answer you. Of course, the book have more content than the PowerPoint because we cannot, what I'm saying is, we cannot uh, uh, tell all the things uh, in the PowerPoint, otherwise it will be too, too, too heavy, right? So that's what I'm saying. Okay, thank you. Uh, nice to meet you guys in the uh, suburb world, and uh, let us uh, continue uh, next week. So, thank you.